Joining us now for an exclusive interview is the aforementioned Dow CEO, Jim Fitterling. Jim, it's good to have you back on the show. Welcome. Hi, Sarah. Great to be back with you. First, we need a, a broad overview and an outlook on the global economy since your chemicals touch everything from housing to autos. What, what do you see? How long is this boom going to last? You know, we've seen a strong demand for electronics, mobility, housing, construction, consumer durables, packaging uh, throughout the quarter. And obviously a lot consumer driven. Consumer spending has been up 50 percent year over year through April. And the consumer's still got a lot of firepower. Globally, they've saved $5 trillion, a lot of that because of stimulus programs. But they've also reduced mortgages and reduced debt. So I think the consumer still has more to go, and we're starting to see industrial come back. As you mentioned, on vehicles, uh, U.S. vehicle sales reached the highest levels since July 2005. And for us, that's good business. But the shift to electric vehicles is even better it takes 40 to 50 percent more of the traditional materials to make a, an electric vehicle like polyurethanes or adhesives or elastomers. And it takes four to five times more silicones to make that vehicle because of the batteries and the powertrain and all the electronics that are on that vehicle. So very good trends, very good drivers. Housing starts are up 60 percent. This is the highest that housing starts have been in a decade. And I think as you've seen yeah. the property markets get hot around the country, people are starting to build now versus buying at the high end of a hot property market. So it sounds like you're largely talking about the U.S., Jim, but you have a pretty big global footprint, including a big business in China. What, what stands out internationally right now as, as where the, the strength is going to come from next? China growth and demand has been good in those sectors as well. Uh, and I think the China economy is performing really well. Most of this growth globally has been on the backs of those two. We're starting to see Europe come back now as they get out of COVID lockdowns and the vaccination rates increase. But of course, at the same time, India and Brazil are very quiet right now. So I think you've got another leg up as that comes. Um, I mentioned earlier today, oil demand is 95 million barrels. Before COVID, uh, we were above 100 million barrels. Just air travel, both international and domestic business travel, would bump oil demand to pre-COVID levels. And I think you're going to see business travel step up the back half of this year. And I think you're going to see international travel next year. So I think both travel, the service sector, and the industrial economy will continue to come on. And I think that's uh, good demand strength for us as we move into 2022. When, when you do look at the outlook for the U.S. economy, Jim, clearly uh, you, your first answer making it uh, very clear that you have a positive outlook. What could derail that and, and uh, within that the, the, the p potential for higher taxes? Well, I think everybody's got an eye right now on inflation and commodity prices. I do think, uh, as others have spoken on the program before, that there is some transitory inflation that moved through. The, you know, there are sometimes a knee-jerk reaction and a spike to some commodities, and we're seeing some of that. But I think CapEx is starting to pick up, and so you'll start to see some of that wash through in the back half of the year. I think you're starting to see the semiconductor supply chain issues in the back half of this year will start to be remedied. And we'll see some of the tightness that we saw from the winter storm smooth out in the back half of the year. In our industry, for example, many people that would take delivery by rail because they need product right away are taking delivery by truck. That puts some pressure on logistics. We've also seen a little bit of that with marine pack cargo at the ports. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. But I think as, as that inflationary pressure comes off a little bit, I think you'll see continued CapEx growth and, and more industrial growth. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.